everyone. My name is Shaya Shritevas and I'm from Pehua Secondary School. I'm in Secondary 3 this year and this is my third year running in the School Space Court Autonomous Driving category. I have been doing robotics since the age of 5 and I know many coding languages. Some of them are Swift, Python, Arduino and EV3. Let me give you an exclusive summary of the preliminary challenge. Our main challenge was to finish all the checkpoints within a time of under one minute while avoiding all the obstacles. Our assigned endpoint and start point for the preliminary challenge was start point A and end point D. My category was Cosme's Autonomous Driving U19. I faced many challenges along the way. Some of them were speed versus stability and possible routes I can take. My method was elimination and experimentation. Now, let me elaborate a little bit on speed versus stability. Speed versus stability is like a seesaw. When stability increases, speed decreases, and vice versa. It's actually quite hard to get a balance of two. So I decided to focus more on stability because I can always focus on speed after my robot is stable. My method was to use the graphical user interface, a GUI. It has many pros and cons. Some of them are, it is easy to use and understand, and it is quite visually simple. And some of its cons are that it has many restrictions, and it is hard to input complex code. Here is a bit of my strategy depicted in a mind map. My strategy was to take the fastest route, trial and error, line tracing, and following all the competition routes. But I would like to focus on the two main important ones, choosing the fastest route and trial and error. When it comes to taking the fastest route, it has two trade-offs, accuracy and writing less code. It is not always about the shortest time taken, because if your robot is not accurate, it might work on your laptop, but it might not work on the organizer's laptop. For example, last year in the finals, I couldn't make it fast the finals because my code was quite fast, but it wasn't accurate. So this year, I thought in my finals, maybe I should focus more on the accuracy than the speed. Secondly, trial and error. The most important thing is to know that there's not always one plan. You should always plan for multiple events, like plan B, C, D, E, and so on and so forth. You should not always have one plan. Always keep backup plans in case plan A doesn't work. Then, when it comes to variations, you should always have multiple variations of your code. For example, take backups of your code. In case for the first uh, code, it works perfectly fine. Then, you should make slow changes, like one mi minor change and one more minimal change. But if it suddenly stops working, you should revert back the changes and bring it back to normal. And lastly, I always submit my best attempts in the competition. Now here is a flowchart showing my thinking process during the competition. First, it starts off with start and end point. Then, the robot will first ask a question. Does it see a white or black line using the IR sensor? If so, it will increment the right view and left view values by 30. If it doesn't, it will detect the color using the RGB sensor. If it detects orange or the checkpoint color, it will pause for 2.5 seconds and increment the checkpoint variable. If not, it will continue asking, does it see green, red, blue, cyan, and other colors? In the end, this entire process repeats again and again. Now, here comes the challenging part. How to increase the speed without affecting the accuracy? Hmm, this part took me quite some time. It took me at least 5 plus hours. Because, at first, I thought that it was not physically possible to get accuracy and speed at the same time. Because when I increased the speed, at sharp turns, the car would veer off the course and then go flying off the road. Then, I spent almost three hours racing my brain for a solution. Then, in the end, I found out that there's only one way to do this. This was so to import a small bit of C code into the advanced action box for accuracy. 
Vicky. Below is a picture of my preliminary match. And the rose gold line represents the root I took. The orange dots are the checkpoints. I finished in a time of total 49 seconds. This is so because I focus on accuracy, but my route was shorter. I didn't increase my robot speed above 60 because I thought it might go flying off the course. And guess what? It did. So I had to keep it at a speed of 55 at max. Then, the gold line shows the line, which is a longer route but more efficient and accurate. On that route, I managed to increase my speed, but still landed me a time of 49 seconds. So I decided to go with the shorter route. In the end, another method to doing this was to break down the map into bite-sized tiny parts, which will allow me to focus better on each part. For example, the first checkpoint, the second checkpoint, and the third checkpoint parts. For example, when it comes to the second checkpoint, which is the most difficult checkpoint, because it doesn't have one line tracing line, it has blobs of black, white striped lines everywhere so it's quite hard to line trace that so i thought then maybe if i focus on the first and third checkpoint first and then i will come up with a way to get past the second checkpoint in the shorter route this also made my code more efficient then comes applying the fun part which is applying knowledge gain to the real world autonomous driving is actually widely used in today's modern world for example, scientists actually predict that this is going to be a part of our daily lives in the near future. For example, it is used in train written robots, Teslas, and even Singapore's train signaling system. Autonomous driving can provide our disabled and elderly with more mobility and independence, as well as for businesses that holds great potential for free transportation and utility sectors. For instance, deploying autonomous systems at night instead of during the daytime could ease traffic congestions during peak hours. Last but not least, I would like to end up with a quote from my favorite book, Harry Potter. Working hard is important, but there's something that matters even more, believing in yourself. This quote has also been said to me many times by my senior, Alicia. She guided me when I was first in the cold space competitions when I was in Sec 1. She taught me how to use basic variables and other ways I can make my code more efficient. Besides her, I would also like to thank my teachers, mentors, and cold space for helping me get this far. Thank you!